Welcome to Oil and Gas Fields in Arabia, Europe, Russia, and Africa. We will be using the Approach to Good Science by Nobel Laureate Richard Feynman. I highly recommend his autobiographical books, the first of which is titled, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman. We start out with the simple question of why do these oil fields occur where they do? It was Dr. George E. P. Box who drew our attention to the fact that essentially all models are wrong, but some are useful. So, acknowledging right up front that the model we are creating here is wrong, the most important question is how wrong does it have to be before it is not useful? So, as Dr. Ross Farden said many years ago, in respect to finding new oil fields, new directions are necessary. As a prelude to new directions, we need to understand the meaning of radial patterns. Those radial patterns are a consequence of mantle convection. This is a plan view of Rayleigh-Bernard convection at a Rayleigh number currently considered appropriate for the mantle. The dark gray radial areas are hot material that is moving upward from the center and outward. The white areas are sheets of cold descending material. The circular black areas at the center of the dark gray radial zones are plumes, which are mentioned often in the geological literature. The plume in a cell is where you have the greatest amount of heat present for the greatest length of time. Here is both a planned view and a cross-sectional view of Rayleigh-Bernard convection. Presented here is also the equation for the Rayleigh number. This is a dimensionless number that indicates the transition from conduction to convection. Evidence will be presented showing that the hot radial patterns have been imprinted into the crust from the underlying mantle. And, like paleontology and paleobotany, that is the fossil remains of animals and plants, these are fossil heat patterns or paleothermal patterns. And, of course, the reason that these radial patterns are so important is that they show the distribution of heat, which is so essential in converting kerogen to oil. We will commence with the bigger picture, which is the spatial patterns in the Arabian Gulf. This is our raw data set. Here we have isolated that data set with emphasis purely on the spatial distribution of oil and gas in the Arabian Gulf. The interpretation. The expectations knowing the radial distribution of heat. 
However, those expectations were not realized. On to the biggest picture, including Arabia, Europe, Russia, Africa. Oil and gas distribution in the biggest picture. One will notice that this map includes the oil and gas distribution all the way from Norway in the northwest to Pakistan in the southeast. Here is the proposed radial center of the Arabian Gulf, the center which is currently located in Iraq is approximately 1,000 kilometers southeast of the true radial center. Here one can see the long, thin, linear oil pools trending between the proposed radial center and the actual radial center in Turkey. The following map shows detail of the radial center currently located in eastern Turkey. Note the 600 kilometer width of the Black Sea. The Black Sea came into existence approximately 125 million years ago. In the next few slides, we will show the spatial consequences of closing the Black Sea. Keeping in mind that the 600 kilometer journey took place over 125 million years. By closing the Black Sea, we have reconstructed the 4,000 kilometer diameter Europe, Russia, Arabia radial pattern. It is important to keep this 4,000 kilometer diameter radial pattern in perspective. The circumference of the Earth is 40,000 kilometers, so this pattern occupies about 10% of the circumference of the Earth. Because we have closed the Black Sea, the radial pattern currently in eastern Turkey has moved 600 kilometers to the north. So the radial pattern would no longer be in eastern Turkey, it would be in southern Russia. But of course, 125 million years ago, there was no Russia. And now let's move on to the Mediterranean Sea, which is tectonically two separate seas. Here we can see the two distinct domains of the Mediterranean Sea. Note that the Eastern Mediterranean Sea is also approximately 600 kilometers wide. There is evidence that the Eastern Mediterranean Sea came into existence about the same time as the Black Sea. So let us now see the impact of closing the Eastern Mediterranean Sea on the biggest picture.
closing the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. One can see that by closing the Eastern Mediterranean, those oil gas deposits present in North Africa complement those present in Southern Europe. It is worth noting that the oil and gas deposits in the Western Mediterranean Sea have experienced very little movement relative to Europe. The Black Sea is closed. The Mediterranean Sea, Eastern Mediterranean Sea, is closed. However, however, the Caspian Sea is still open, or is it? There may be a very simple relationship between the width of the Black Sea, the width of the Eastern Mediterranean Sea, and the length of the Caspian Sea. Acknowledging this simple arithmetic, is it possible that the three seas, the Black Sea, the Medi Eastern Mediterranean Sea, and the Caspian Sea, all came into existence approximately at the same time due to expansion. Some fine tuning of the biggest picture. Each blue dot is a proposed radial center. Note that the radial centers in northern Russia appear to have separated from the radial arms themselves. As well, note that by closing the Eastern Mediterranean Sea, the partial radial patterns in Southern Europe have been completed. For example, the arrow pointing from radial center to Egypt is now a complete radial arm. And those oil and gas deposits in Libya are obviously part of a radial pattern with the center at the very southern end of Italy. Not only are oil and gas deposits distributed in radial patterns, they also have a relationship with meteor impacts. There are many publications showing the relationship between meteor impacts and hydrocarbon production. However, one of the best is a book by Orzinski in 2013 titled Impact Cratering Processes and Products. Orzinski shows that hydrocarbon accumulations occur at the very center of a circular meter impact structure or along the rim areas, that is, the circumference. One of the most important reasons for the accumulation of hydrocarbons at the very center or along the circumference of meter impact structures is the brecciation of rocks at both of these locations. The biggest problem in respect to exploration and discovering the centers and circumferences of ancient meteor impacts is the fact that the Earth is a very dynamic planet. That dynamism means that many of the ancient meteor impacts have become obscured by more recent tectonic events here on Earth. One can see from this artistic rendition of a typical complex impact crater that brecciation takes place at the very central part of the impact 
and along the circumference or the rim of the meteor impact. And as pointed out by Orzinski and others, the brecciation at these two locations are perfect locations for the accumulation of hydrocarbons. We have direct evidence of much more recent meteor impacts and their relationship to hydrocarbon accumulations. One of the better examples is the 66 million year ago meteor impact known as Chicxulub on the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. The Chicxulub impact has both an inner and an outer ring structure, therefore being a complex meteor impact. The fact that the Chicxulub type of meteor impact has relatively invariant morphological and structural properties as a function of diameter will be used later on in this presentation. The Akal, Nohawk, Chak, and Kutz oil fields are proximal to and genetically tied to the Chicxulub impact. Following is evidence for a proposed ancient meteor impact from satellite images of Arabia, North Africa, and Eurasia. Here we are applying the Chicxulub impact as a template for inner and outer ring relative size. The biggest difference between the Chicxulu meteor impact as a template and the proposed meteor impact centered on the Red Sea is that the Red Sea impact is 4,000 kilometers in diameter. Note that the radial center in eastern Turkey falls exactly along the outer edge, the circumference of our proposed meteor impact using the Chicxulub template. As well, the Strait of Hormuz, a very strange topographic feature indeed, also falls on the circumference of the proposed meteor impact. The inner circle of the proposed meteor impact comprises the Nubian shield to the west and the Arabian shield to the east. The Arabian shield and Nubian shield were in contact with one another prior to the opening of the Red Sea. These two shields constitute a craton which in this particular case is the very center, the inner circle of our proposed meteor impact. The important takeaway is to realize that central cratons of continents may consist of both shields and platforms, and a shield is a part of a craton. It is proposed that the cratons present on the continents of the Earth are ancient meteor impacts, the central part of ancient meteor impacts. Hansen, in her 2015 paper on the impact origin of Archean cratons, actually puts this idea forward. Hansen's 
geological evaluation of the planet Venus, where she discovered craton-like features ranging in size from 1,400 to 2,400 kilometers in diameter, were used as an analog for what's possible in the cratons here on Earth. As mentioned previously, our Earth is an incredibly dynamic planet. And our Moon is essentially dead. Therefore, the Moon has recorded very ancient meteor impacts on its surface that have disappeared, been obscured here on Earth. The fact that the Earth has six times the gravitational pull of the Moon means that the Earth will have attracted not only more meteors, but as well much larger meteors, especially billions of years ago. Because the moon rotates once for every time it rotates the Earth, the same side of the moon is always facing the Earth. Hence, this information about the far side of the moon has only become available to us recently. Note not only the giant 2,500 kilometer diameter South Pole Aitken Basin impact, but also the thousands, if not tens of thousands, of smaller meteor impacts on the moon. Always remembering that the impacts here on Earth have been more and bigger. This paucity of evidence for early Earth meteor impacts has been recognized in the literature for many years. Again, using the moon as an analog, we're able to model the Earth, the Earth's surface, of the late heavy bombardment 4.2 to 3.8 billion years ago. Here on these whole Earth projections, one can see, using the moon as an analog, the change in the patterning on the Earth over a billion years between 4.4 and 3.5 billion years ago. There are two points in respect to these models. First, it is obvious that between 4.4 and 4.1 billion years ago, the templating of the Earth's surface was intense and slightly smaller templates replaced and superimposed on larger templates. Second, since these are whole Earth projections, the width of the diagrams is 40,000 kilometers, which is the circumference of the Earth. Hence, the proposed Red Sea meteor impact with a diameter of 4,000 kilometers is reasonable. Let's now return to the spatial and temporal distribution of oil and gas in Arabia, Europe, Russia, and Africa. We have seen that by closing the Black Sea, the radial center in eastern Turkey moves 600 kilometers to the north in southern Russia. After closing the eastern Mediterranean Sea, we must move the proposed ancient meteor impact site centered on the Red Sea 600 kilometers to the north as well. Moving the Red Sea Meteor Impact Site, 600 kilometers to the north. And of course, the Chicxulub templates will move as well 600 kilometers to the north.
always keeping in mind that the radial center is at the very center of a 4,000 kilometer diameter radial pattern. This map is incomplete, but it does give one a perspective on the radial centers and the radial arms. In this map, the Eastern Mediterranean Sea has been closed, but the Black Sea has been left open. So the radial center is in Eastern Turkey. We know from gravity data that the meteorite that created the 200 kilometer diameter Chicxulub crater penetrated to a depth of 30 kilometers. Therefore, the meteorite that created a 4,000 kilometer diameter meteor impact would have penetrated to a much greater depth well into the mantle. This increased penetration would also increase the reservoir of heat that could migrate towards the surface of the earth from the mantle. Another data set that supports the proposed meteor impact model is current GPS measurements. Current GPS measurements proximal to the proposed meteor impact show counterclockwise rotation. This counterclockwise rotation creates a vortex that is centered on the Red Sea at the proposed meteor impact site. Similar vortex movement has been detected in the basin and range in the USA. However, the rotation is clockwise. Bostrom, in his book Tectonic Consequences of the Earth's Rotation, shows that earth tide forces acting on a fluid mantle would cause the material in the mantle to convect in a clockwise rotation in the northern hemisphere and an anti-clockwise rotation in the southern hemisphere. If Bostrom's conclusions are correct, and since the rotation of the vortex at the Red Sea is counterclockwise, one would expect that the vortex was created in the Southern Hemisphere. The research of Montoni and others shows that between 160 and 100 million years ago, this appears to have been the case. The pink circle shows that time when the Arabian Gulf was south of the equator. Recall the quote from Orzinski, 2013, that commercial hydrocarbon accumulations at impact structures are generally located in the center or on the circumference, that is, the rim areas of these structures. My research in 2007 confirmed that the circumference of meteor impact sites are locations where world-class metal deposits are also located. Now let's have a look at the smaller picture. Some basics with an emphasis on the thermal alteration of buried organic matter in respect to creating petroleum and the importance, as we will see subsequently, of secondary migration. Let's have a closer look at the biggest oil gas field in the world, Gawar, in Saudi Arabia. Here we can see that the Gawar 
oil and gas field and other smaller oil fields are all proximal to the inner ring of the proposed meteor impact and not within the inner ring. Most of the oil accumulation is inside of the Mesozoic anticlinal highs. There are many Mesozoic anticlines in Saudi Arabia, so which ones have oil and gas accumulations? So to decide which anticlines are worthy of exploration, we need more details on what we know. The radial zones are approximately 100 kilometers wide. As well, these radial zones were hot to very hot, causing lateral migration of the oil. As an interesting contrast, the oil accumulations here in the Gippsland Basin of Victoria, Australia are in the radial zones, not lateral to those zones. This indicates that the heat source was directly beneath the oil pool. So here is a list of what we know about the Arabian Gulf oil and gas fields. So using our list of what we know, we are able to make predictions as to where to explore for more oil. One can see here that 100 kilometers west of the great Gawar anticlinal structure, biggest oil pool in the world, there is a, another Mesozoic anticline. As well, that 100 kilometer distance is part of one of the very hot radial zones. The following few slides will give us an historical perspective in respect to the oil and gas in the Arabian Gulf. The number of production wells and water injection wells put down on the Gawar oil field over a 60 year period is mind boggling. The oil accumulation at Gawar is primarily in the upper Jurassic rocks. And one can see from this geological cross section that the hundreds of drill holes at Gawar would have to have gone to a depth of at least two kilometers. As well, the potential giant oil field located 100 kilometers west of Gawar would ha require drilling to less depths of less than two kilometers. Contributions. Number one, the oil gas fields in Arabia, Europe, Russia, Africa occur in many and varied radial patterns. Two, closing the Black Sea reveals that the largest radial pattern is 4,000 kilometers in diameter. Three, closing the Eastern Mediterranean Sea reveals that the various radial patterns in northern Africa complement those in southern Europe. 4. 
The Red Sea splits the Arabian Nubian Craton. 5. This craton is the inner circle of an ancient complex meteor impact. 6. This model allows predictions for future discoveries.